Hey guys, welcome to my second YouTube video, and today we're gonna be having deep talk. Now it's been exactly 51 days since I left the house, and honestly, I feel kind of bad. Primarily because the last time I was out, I was in school, and on that day, I wasn't really feeling well, and so I decided to leave school early. But now I kind of regret that decision, because having known what I know now, I probably would have stayed a little longer that day. Not gonna lie, I kind of miss school, and I really miss my friends so much. I really miss the people I see in school. Now one of the people I'd normally see every day, but now I really miss is going to be on our show today and her name is Sophie Concha. Now if you don't know, Sophie Concha is a YouTuber and she has a lot of subscribers, like a lot of subscribers. But one thing you probably don't know is she's actually my cousin and I'm really proud to have seen Sophie climb up the YouTube ladder and see her grow as a YouTuber and it is an honor to have Sophie Concha with us here today. Hey Sophie! Hey. Hi! <laughs> it's nice to nice see you to and see it's, you nice too. To, it's nice to be able to have a YouTube video with you even if we're not in the same place. So welcome to my YouTube channel. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, so, Hello, you, you subscribers! What's up? <laughs> so Sophie, I have a message for you. I just mentioned this Kanina in my video. I told my audience that I'm really proud of you. I'm proud to have seen you grow in your YouTube career. And honestly, it's what inspired me to get into this thing as well. So thank you, Sophie. I hope you continue to do well in YouTube. Don't cry, you're just at the thank start. You. <laughs> That was so heartfelt. Thank you. So Sophie, how have you been? How is your quarantine so far? <laughs> My quarantine so far. Honestly, it's been such a roller coaster because none of us expected this. So for the first few weeks, it was just super bad. Like me just being super unproductive and lazy. And then I went into a period of wanting to film and edit. And then now I'm back to the period where I just don't want to do anything. So, you know, we'll see where this goes. You know, Io, you're inspiring me to upload and edit that videos also. Aww. I feel you though. I've been so lazy the past few weeks. That's why I haven't made a YouTube video. It's all good. <laughs> We're back in the mood. So, how did your YouTube journey start? When did it happen? And how did it happen? Okay, so I started posting videos 2017. Um, I was in grade 10 and I think I started with like makeup, skincare types of videos until I transitioned into the content that I create now. So yeah, it's been 3 years and 20k subscribers after and wow. I'm still having fun, you know. It's a side project. It's never been like something that I really planned on doing but I'm having fun and I'm learning a lot. <laughs> That's great. So uh, just a question. In your first video, how many how many views did you get within like oh my, a year uh, or something? How many views um, do you have now? What's your highest number of views now? So the first video, it's like a Baguio makeup routine because I was in Baguio and I filmed it. So I just named it that. And for the first year that it was up, probably like 1k, 1.5. First video? That's pretty good, huh? <laughs> Yeah, and, and then my highest watched video so far is my A Productive Sunday video yeah, where I just that. filmed myself <laughs> like being productive in school. Alright, so Thanks. are you ready for the deep question? <laughs> <laughs> so just to introduce our audience to Deep Talk, I made a list of I think 8 questions and I made Sophie choose a number between 1 and 8 and she chose the number 7. So, mm -hmm. so let's read the question. So there's this hypothetical experience machine that can simulate virtually any experience you wish. All your senses will be intact when you're experiencing it and you will be 100% conscious in that experience. So for example, you simulate a scenario wherein you're dating your dream boyfriend. He is as real as you can imagine and he is as substantial as a normal human being. So for example, he tells you about his hobbies he watches movies with you, enjoys movies with you, talks about whatever like, you guys want to talk about. But the thing is, he's still not a human. He's still a product of the experience machine. So when you step out into the real world, that ideal boyfriend either doesn't exist, or if he does exist, he probably doesn't even know you exist. So that raises the question, 
how important is self-pleasure to finding fulfillment? And by extension, how do you see that experience machine in your life? So, Sophie, would you like to give some thoughts? I asked this to you a couple of weeks <laughs> okay. ago. Oh, my thoughts. Okay, well, to answer your main question, how important is self-pleasure to finding fulfillment? I don't think it's important at all. <laughs> Controversial opinion. So, let me elaborate. I think that it's very easy to be caught up with your self-interests and your inclinations because these are the things that essentially make you happy and essentially pleasure you in the moment you know if you experience these things but okay so for example in the situation that you gave me which I relate to very much at the moment um oh, I <laughs> Sophie. sorry but yeah, it's so it's so easy for everyone to have a picture of your perfect partner, you know, to have a list of your expectations uh, in your relationship with them and what you think they should look like, what you guys should do together. But you know, at the end of the day, let's be real, life doesn't work out that way. And life doesn't always work in our favor, you know, so we can't always get what we want. And so I think that instead of using self-pleasure as a means to finding fulfillment, I think that having an acceptance or understanding of how things work. I think that's better in terms of reaching fulfillment. So, you know, it's not that we settle for anything less than our expectations, but it's finding the joy in what we can that are you okay, leads us Sophie? to fulfillment. <laughs> okay? I really, I'm okay. Let me give you like a life experience that really helped me in answering this question. So in high school, I was such a grade conscious student and you know, I just worked towards getting good grades and not necessarily putting my mental health first or putting my social life in the mix and I just wanted to get good grades you know I didn't really care about the learning aspect and so when I graduated I graduated with high honors which was good but it didn't make me feel fulfilled so that's one thing I regret like in my entire high school life experience I regret not putting learning and the value of education first because I put grades first and that's why I wasn't fulfilled with my high school experience so when I entered college I really framed my mindset and now I just really value learning a lot more even though sometimes I fail at least I get to learn more and get more knowledge you know and that ultimately makes me feel more fulfilled so yeah so you're very much intact with reality and like the, yes. the weaknesses of reality and you're trying to slowly accept it I guess you're really into the idea of sort of living with the world instead of just living for yourself and by extension, yeah. you know, you really care about your impact. Just to introduce you to like, schools of thought, to this hypothetical experience, there are some people that might probably see the experience machine as pretty unnecessary. They wouldn't really want to be in it because they feel like it would be useless to spend a lot of time with a person that doesn't exist and they would rather spend time with people that actually exist. Um, they really want to live in reality live with an impact on the actual world rather than just live in a simulation of reality where they feel like they're making an impact but in reality they aren't. So that's one school of thought. People care about their impact yeah. in the world. They, people care about the world and I think that's where you kind of lie in especially since you yeah, kind of so developed a more mature <laughs> view on the world. There are other people, hedonists. Hedonists believe that good is always equal to what is pleasurable. They're the other extreme, the ones who want to who really yeah. care too much about the indulgence and that's what gives the meaning in life so you have mm -hmm. people like that who would want to stay in the machine forever because they don't care if the people they're interacting with the machine are real or not for as long as they they, they feel for themselves that they're experiencing stuff like with all, all, all their five senses and they don't really care now what's happening outside so they really care about their own pleasure so with uh -huh. that in mind at what points in your life did you embody either one of those schools of thought like you care about your impact so much or you just want to live without caring about what other people think damn you <laughs> you know it's hard because i started with this whole youtube career like pretty early on compared to others and so my mindset or the way I, that i portray myself in the world has always been sort of in relation to that and there's always been a part of me that is very conscious of my self-image and my impact on other people so especially now that i am kind of older and more mature with my thinking people tend to believe in me more 
more and people tend to listen to me more so i have to be careful with what i say so yeah that first school of thought that you mentioned has been sort of at the back of my mind for three years now because that's when i started youtube have i ever experienced or thought about the second school of thought though i don't think so because i don't know i've just always been a people oriented person that's how i was raised that's how i i don't know that's how i make more connections and more meaningful connections with people by being oriented towards them and that second school of thought doesn't really coincide with that version of me please kind of relate with, with with what you said about the second one since yeah honestly i'm pretty much a people oriented person like i really like making connections with other people so there was mm -hmm. one time i guess in high school when i kind of saw myself getting distracted instead of wanting to achieve my goals I just wanted to slack off, I wanted to chill. So I think by the time I reached 11th grade, I kind of stopped being active. And while I kind of felt like numb, I didn't feel unfulfilled, there was still that neglect I had for my impact in school. But I can also argue nonetheless that I still stay the people-oriented person because it was also during that time when I continued making real connections with real people. In fact, that's the time I really found by good friends. Friends that I Aww. still stick to until now. So I think we're both really into the first school of thought. We actually care about impact and we actually care yeah. about reality even if it doesn't like suit our favor. And I guess it's a matter yes. of finding peace exactly. in the idea that yes. you know, not everything is gonna work in our favor but that's the beauty of life. If everything worked in our favor, life would probably be so boring. Like we probably wouldn't, we wouldn't, exactly. get, we wouldn't feel suspense. You wouldn't feel the need to hope, the need to have faith. And I guess that's what gives life so much more meaning. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Well, you know, okay, there's a song that I've been listening to a lot lately. It's called okay. Commitment Issues by Tiffany Day. And there's a line there that says, my L's are lessons. I did, I did. Because yeah. um, typically, L's are losses. But no, I really, I really resonated with that line because at the end of the day, all your setbacks and all your mistakes in life and the, the things that never go the way you want them to, they're lessons to make you a better person, you know? That's, and that's the beauty that's so of true. life. Honestly, like, I really look at the setbacks I've experienced before as I feel like regretting is so counterintuitive. Like, I'd rather use those experiences, like, to actually change my life, to actually make me a better yes. person, rather than just look back and constantly regret every day. Because you can never change those experiences. All these past experiences we've had, the good and bad, they're there to make us better persons every day. Yeah. Yes. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> That's so nice. So Aww. thank you so much, Sophie, for being here with me. For thank you for this having very me. Senti, you know, deep talk. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is the first time I'm doing this deep talk thing. I'm so far, honored. Feel, Dude, this is fun. I feel the emotion happening, even if we're on camera. There's so much. <laughs> There's so much heart that came into this. <laughs> I hope I, I hope I didn't torture you. You did not. Don't worry about much. it. It was fun. It was really fun. You know, we're in quarantine and my that's brain's good, not really good. working. And this this question, guys, you sent it to me like a couple weeks ago. And I've been thinking about it ever since. I swear. It was fun. It was fun. Thanks, Io. <laughs> I got you. I got you. And thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. again, Sophie. It's an honor to have a famous YouTuber on my channel. I'm no, honored. I'm honored. for you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so thank you for watching guys and I hope you guys like and subscribe to mine <laughs> and Sophie's YouTube yeah. channel. Especially subscribe to hers because she gives really amazing Aww. content. Thank you guys for watching. If you're emotional, you, you, it's okay to cry, you know. Be like Sophie. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay to cry guys, don't worry, be like Sophie. <laughs>